the Big O 2019 Day 2, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. I'm Bobby Narco. I'm joined by Rick Rettel. Hey there, Bobby. May the 4th be with you, too. We are at Track 2. This is, as you said, Game 4 at Track 2 today. Our games right now, our teams are going to be Los Anarchists in black and Pixies in white. Why don't you give us a rundown of who's playing for Los Anarchists? I would be glad to. Number 05 is Ginger Snapper. Number 100 is Monster. Number 1024 is Little Devil Rosie. 117, Rainbow Smash. 1230, Sam I Slam. Number 178, Frightening Lightning. Number 23 is Trick Z. Number 362 is Twiggy Marley. Number 4, Cherry Kiss. Number 42, Mount Crushmore. Number 44, Mini Maniac. Number 52, Squash Bob Ski Pants. Number 710, Brazilian Smacks. Number 714, Slamorella. And the captain wearing number 79, Will Regulator. Coaches are Quadfather, he'll be wearing the A, joined by Master Smasher, Regulator, and Just Matt. In white, we have the Pixies, 111, Damage Patch Kid, 123, Tap Out, 27, Tomahawk, 3, Little Miss Savage, 3, Zero, Miss B. Gonzalez, 3, 3, Lenya Flokia, 3, 6, 0, Boss, that's your captain for this game, 4, 2, Nacho Friends, 5, 0, Strawberry Shortcake, 51, 50, Lucky Harms, 7, Thunder Breeze, 7, 3, Val Hillary, your coaches, Lobo, Ginger, Bill, and Chad. All right. Pixies are out of Post Falls, Idaho, and the Anarchists out of Los Angeles, California. Only the second year in existence for Los Anarchists, their first year last year, they won the bronze medal at the, uh, at the JRDA Championships in Feasterville, Pennsylvania. That's pretty exciting. Have they held on to that bronze? Well, they're holding on to the number three standing, so they're the, the reigning bronze medal holder and keeping number three in the JRDA rankings. Do you know who it was that they played for that bronze standing? They played Angel City, which is at a kind of a splinter league. They, they had the same, uh, came from the same group of skaters and formed two separate leagues. So common roots, both fighting for the same position in the oh, yes. JRD rankings. It, it was a exciting. heck of a game for the bronze medal last year in Feasterville. Quite, quite the game uh, at, uh, at the bronze medal battle. That's an exciting, that's an exciting line. So Los Anarchists are sitting at uh, number three in the JRDA standings. The Pixies that they're playing during this game, they are at number 11 right now. So we see a little bit of a ranking spread between these two teams. We're gonna be looking at the Pixies trying to make up that spread and increase their standings overall. Absolutely. And the, the Pixies also have a little bit of a story of, of uh, where they came from as well. They originally started out as the team in Spokane, Washington. They were the original all-female roller derby team in Spokane, Washington. Uh, now they're in Post Falls, Idaho. Uh, but uh, that's the nearest large city is Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So they're right there on that Idaho-Washington border. It's a great place to be from, not too far from my own home. There you go. Looks like we have jammers lining up on the track. Looks like one. Tomahawk. That's right. And we've got Monster for Los Anarchists. If there is somebody monitoring the broadcast, I would love to have my headset turned up a little bit, or a lot of it. I'll bet you I can give you a hand with that. How do you sound now? It hasn't changed life for you? No. I might be unplugged. For our non-skating officials, we've got Decider, William Moore, Andy Oakley, While our officials get everything sorted, we see both uh, teams hanging out at that pivot line at the front. A little group of black and a group of white skaters. They're both staying pretty close together while they're getting some feedback from their coaches. Getting a message in here from uh, Video Blago saying, turn your output up. Just want to know, what's that mean? What's an output? How do I turn it up? We are at a little bit of a loss. We don't have quite the necessary people. We don't have a scorekeeper. We're missing one scorekeeper. So that is why we are not underway right now. We are uh, waiting for the necessary personnel to show up. 
so that this can be a regulation game. So um, why not give out some of our uh, sponsor reads while we have this uh, lag? Um, if you're going to be using social media, there's a hashtag BigO2019. Use it in all your tournament posts this weekend. Now, there's a few hashtags going around. There's Big O Pets. So there's a hashtag Big O 2019 Cats and a Dogs one. So if you're watching with your pets, post your pictures. Yeah, Big O 20, uh, 2019 Pets, maybe. Big O 2019 Zoo. I think it would be a good one. I don't know what we're supposed to do with the hamsters and bunnies and lizards. Tag them all separately. Big O 2019 Monitor Lizards. Hashtag Big O 2019, oh, right. if nothing else. <laughs> exactly. we'll, we'll see everything. Use that hashtag. Be social with your media. At uh, in Eugene, Oregon right now, I was walking around um, the Vendor Village. That doesn't do much good for our listeners at home, but we sure do have a lot of support. In yeah, if you get a chance, go to a major tournament like this. They are, it's a mecca for Derby fans. We've got some help coming in for our sound in our ears. How about that? If all else fails, Bobby Narco and I are going to just talk to each other the whole time. Hey, I got my uh, headsets to work. Thank you, you to you the got text. your headset up? Yeah. All right. I'm comfortable just talking to you regardless of what we can hear. Uh, I was able to hear you. It was just so faint. That I was wondering if I would do better with my headsets off. Was everything I was saying coming through? I heard you loud and clear there, okay, Bobby. Okay, good. All right. Bobby, where do you work from with your home league? Uh, I'm out of Gotham. I'm with Gotham Girls Roller Derby. I've been announcing with them since 2011. So uh, I'm very, uh, very happy to have that gig. Get to work with some fantastic people. I'd like to give a shout out to Mo Chismo, to Laughing Penguin, to Hebrew Ham Lincoln, to Caps a Lock, um, to Raggedy Animal. My, I have a, a tremendously talented stable of announcers, many of which are former skaters or former officials. Uh, some of them have backgrounds uh, in theater and burlesque, uh, so it's a it's a nice mix of people. We got a young guy coming up, uh, Freddie, uh, Freddie Set Go. He uh, started out as an official, and I was crossing over to doing some announcing. So if they're listening at home, uh, shout out to my Gotham people. I know we have a ref, one of the officials here, strong female character, also from Gotham. So few people from Gotham here at this tournament, even though none of the teams are playing. What a robust crew you have to draw from out there, Bobby. That sounds fantastic. It, it is a luxury living in a large city. So uh, I do have a, a lot of announcers on which to draw and draw upon them regularly because we do have four travel teams and then four league teams. So there's lots of derby being played in the Big Apple. That's wonderful. We're uh, opposite to you and I. I'm on the opposite coast of you. I'm on the west coast. I'm in different countries. I'm in Canada. I am on a tiny little island. Um, I work with the Eves of Destruction Roller Derby, where I'm a skater, a coach, and an announcer. My uh, co-head announcer is C3P Ho, and we travel all over the place uh, between her and I and announce all over. The rest of my announcing crew is all also skaters. So uh, the announcing that we hear where, um, where I live and where the majority of our skating is, is coming from the viewpoint of skaters. So I love the skater's perspective. I love working with the skater, having never skated myself. Uh, they, they see things from a different way, and uh, I, I'm much more of a rules-oriented guy, so I think it makes a great contrast with somebody who's done some actual skating. Yeah, it is. I find uh, when, I, when I do work with uh, other announcers like yourself that uh, come from that what are the rules um, background, we do have a different style of announcing because, as, as I said, like as, as a skater, we tend to like see the potential of the action right. and uh, waiting to say what's going to happen while we're watching the game is pretty exciting. And knowing the the, the the empathy that you guys have with the skaters, you know what it's like to be hit. You know what it's, you know the victory of getting that extra point, and nailing that apex jump, or the agony of failing that apex jump. That's exactly right. Um, we can see our skaters right now skating around the track while we're waiting for the officials to get um, things sorted out with that uh, scorekeeper. You said that uh, we're still trying to track down. Yep. The skaters are keeping themselves moving. You have like your off skates warm. You have your on skates warm up, and then. You have to keep working to keep your body warm so you don't lose that momentum pre-game. Yeah. 
I did hear a rolling whistle. That's a promising sound for us. Very promising. Ready to get things underway, Al. Sounds good. So taking their place on the Rydell Jam Line. As we said before, it's worth saying again, why don't you take us back out to that Rydell Jam Line? I sure will. We've got uh, number 100, Monster for Los Anarchists. Number 27, Tomahawk in white for the Pixies. Pixies with pink helmet covers. They're going white with pink accents and uh, LA black with white and gold uh, accents. That whole pack was lined up there at the jam line, uh, the pivot line, sorry. That gave both jammers a little bit of a run up to the front. The Pixies took a move ahead there, trying to stay ahead. Of First penalty of the game is a low block, and lead jam has gone to those anarchists. That's Monster, your lead jammer. Oh, and it's a power jam now as a track cut called on Tomahawk. We've got 30 seconds for Monster to pull out as many points as she can for Los Anarchists. That pivot up at the top of the pack just giving her a devil of a time. A lot of agile foot movement there on both parts. That is four points. Your first points of the game go to Los Anarchists, Jammer Monster. That's Lucky Harms with that pivot stripe just putting on a blocking clinic at the top of the pack. We're seeing some amazing experience out of these junior skaters. When you're yeah. seeing that positional blocking and backward facing blocking simultaneously. There no the doubt. Yeah, it augurs well for the future of this sport. When I was working Junior World Cup and Junior Champs last year, the broadcast was from one floor up. Looking down on the action, I didn't know that I wasn't watching adults skate. That's a really great point. These um, are all really mature um, skating juniors and that there is not a skater on the track that looks like they don't have years of experience behind them. Anarchist pivot to the penalty box on a low block. We are at 12 points this first jam for Los Anarchists. Jammer out for the Pixies, still on the initial pass. Cover in hand. Once that cover is in hand, the attention of the opposing team gets divided because that cover could be passed at any moment to the pivot. And Pixie's pivot is doing a great job of maintaining proximity to that jammer. That, I, I like hearing jam number one, but I like uh, the, the pivot play I'm seeing from Lucky Harms. That's right. This wide brace at the front. And two minutes ends the jam. That jam was not called off. Anarchists were going to milk it for all it was worth, especially because the other jammer was still on the initial. And that is really shots fired by Los Anarchists. That's a high-scored jam right out the gate. 16 points to no points for the Pixies. Los Anarchists are trying to set this pace early on. Boy, that ponytail getting in the way of the Pixies jammer. We'll find out as soon as they pop them on the screen. One. We've got Frightening Lightning in black for Los Anarchists, Damage Patch Kid for the Pixies. Penalty coming in. That is the Pixies pivot heading to the penalty box. Damage Patch Kid at the back of the pack right now. All four of those blockers um, for Los Anarchists working there. Hoping to have called a, um, drawn a cut track on the outside. No luck. Damage Patch Kid was aware of their track position. One anarchist, anarchist uh, bridging to keep everybody in play. And now that uh, Pixies have forced the LA Jammer to the back to the pivot line, we still haven't reached turn one yet. We haven't reached turn one. Speedy Gonzalez saw that hit to the outside and quickly ran that all the way back. Yeah. Four arm penalty coming in. And it is on the Pixies Jammer. So back to back power jams to start the game for Los Anarchists. And they are showing why they won the bronze medal last year. That is lead now for Frightening Lightning. So both leads of the game have gone to the team from Los Angeles, California. Frightening Lightning, a smaller jammer in stature in comparison to Damage Patch Kid. And that it, we're seeing some advantage there with the difference in levels. Damage Patch Kid, I'm um, sorry, Frightening Lightning is able to get so much lower than um, those blockers. Blocker number 5-0 in white, strawberry short skate, particularly so much taller and that gives that advantage to Frightening Lightning. You can just get so much lower, get that shoulder around and really fight that momentum. The, the, there's that opportunity there to use uh, physics to your advantage when you can be that much lower than your opponent. So only four points on the board for the Anarchists, only four points on the board, four hard fought points on the board for the Anarchists, however, brings them to 20. Pixie's still looking for their first points of the game. 
trying to get those. Number 27 making a second appearance on the jammer line here. And jam number three is Tomahawk. And 714 is Slamarella making her debut on the jammer line this game. Big hit by the Pixies. Both sides. We had jammers go out on the inside and the outside right about simultaneously there. That was one, two, three, tap out with a nice hit. We see a lot of communications between the blockers and the um, pack refs. They're looking for um, their awareness to see if there are cuts available. Four on penalty called on the pivot, so Pixies are going to be pivotless, and lead has gone to Losa Anarchist for the third time in a row. That's number 27, Tomahawk, making the return to the pack. With that jump in the air, having passed the hips of opposing players, that is the initial points put on the board for the Pixies. Four points that pass. That gem ends with two points to Los Anarchists. So for the first time, the Pixies outscore the Anarchists, although both teams do put, do put points on the board. We're seeing a repeat there of 1-1-1 one, one, one damage patch kid jamming for the Pixies. Yeah, it looks like a two-jammer rotation, 27-1-11, 27-1-11, through four jams. Uh, Los Anarchists yet, have yet to repeat a jammer. They've got number four on the jammer line, Cherry Kiss. 3-6-0 with that pullback. Boss, that's your coach, sorry, your captain for um, the Pixies. Pixies do have a coach that has aged out of the program. That's Ginger. Ginger graduated out of the program last year and is now coaching. Penalty box is now empty. We have a full contingent of jammers and blockers on the track. Lead once again to the Anarchists. Initial pass has been completed as well by Damage Patch Kitch. And two points picked up on the back stretch before the jam is called. Anarchists have put points on the board in every frame. They are sitting at 24. And Pixie shut out for the third time. Tap out, one, two, three. That's, I get it, I get, I see what they've done there. That's the first jammer that's not 27 or 111 on the line for the Pixies. And we'll at least a five jammer rotation. Uh, now, who's that new jammer out there? That's 1024, Lil, Devi, Lil Devil Rosie. Lil Devil Rosie. Little Devil Rosie picking up lead also. Every LA Anarchist jammer got a high block sending an Anarchist blocker to the penalty box. Initial pass has been completed by tap out. Track cut being sent in. Pixies losing their pivot on a track cut. Tap out oh, capitalizing nice. on a low jammer stance. Able to come around quickly. Stays low below the radar of those Los Anarchist blockers. Jumps that apex. Picks up the four points for Pixies. Jammer swap and fours. Right now we've got eight and eight for this jam. Direction of play penalty, that'll thin out the pack a little bit more. Push to the inside, recycles Los Anarchists jammer to the back. That's the Anarchist pivot on the direction of play. So swapping pivots as the Pixies pivot is released. Wow, this is a big tally. That is four, that is another four points for Pixie, so a total of 12. Both jammers got 12 points in that jam. A dozen points each. Significantly, though, that is a lot of points for the Pixies considering their gameplay so far. Previously, they picked up four points in jam three, 12 points in jam five. That quadruples their score. Yeah. <laughs> 12 points is the high, uh, excuse me, is the high jam of the game for the Pixies. 16 points were put on the board in jam number one by the Anarchists. Who's on the jammer line right now? We have 5150 Lucky Harms in white and Mount Crushmore in black. Mount Crushmore is your lead for this jam. Mount Crushmore wearing number 42. So LA has put a different jammer on the line all six jams. And they've still had lead all six jams. And still had lead. For nothing, accounting for 10% of the Anarchist score, brings them up to 40. Pixies held at 16. We're looking at a rematch of Jam 1 here. We've got 1-0-0 zero, zero, Monster facing off against 2-7 Tomahawk. There you go. Pixies are putting four jammers out there, uh, but they're mostly relying on 27 so far. 
And 111 next. First lead jam of the game for the Pixies. Put your hands together, post balls, Idaho. It's a quick return to a solid tripod of black blockers there. Um, that Los Anarchists keeping one blocker ahead to make sure that pack is maintained. Pack in retrograde, two Pixies hitting the penalty box. Penal the pivot is on a high block. I didn't see the penalty on the blocker. Initial finally completed by the Anarchists. Tomahawk takes a look over their shoulder for some guidance. Here's and the call it. Heard a little whistle bleed over from the other track. For a second I thought the jam was called off, but I saw the skaters still keep skating. So three points on the board for the Pixies. First time in the game that the Anarchists have been held scoreless. One hundred doing back-to-back -back jams. It's the first time we've seen a back-to-back -back jam without a penalty involved. Two lead jams in a row for the Pixies. That is Damage Patch Kid. Number one, one, one. So also three jams for Damage Patch Kid. She's now one for three on the jammer line. She's being drawn all the way back to the top apex. They're gonna take her back to the backstretch. With both teams moving in that clockwise direction, that draws it back as keeps the pack moving back. It makes that drawback just that much harder. Failure to reform and a track cut is drawn on the Pixies jammer. So this jam will go with a full two minutes. Our second two minute jam had one in jam number one. That's which, right, and that early on two minute jam was not due to penalties. Yeah, not a call, I was just <laughs> never got called off. That's all, you could only skate for two minutes. We've got four points so far in this jam for a monster of Los Anarchists. And that is a completed second scoring pass. That makes another four points for Monster. Monster with those 16 points early on in jam one. We have a returned jammer from the penalty box, Damage Patch Kid, back on the track at the back of the pack. Everybody kind of bottled up at turn one, then I was part of the track. Direction of play penalty will thin it out a little bit. Anarchist blocker on the direction. One zero two four. We're doing a lot of holding back. Moves to the front. Ends up getting a forearm penalty. That sends them to the penalty box. Got yeah, a little double rosy on the forearm. Now we've turned into the top apex, stretched out to just the start of the back stretch. And the jam is called off. But uh, four more points on the board, total of eight for the Anarchists, brings them up to 48, but points also put on the board by the Pixies. Four points brings them up to 23. Roughly a two to one margin. Visit derbywarehouse.com for all your derby gear needs with free shipping and free returns. That's derbywarehouse.com. I did not see the penalty on number 100, but starting in the penalty box for the third jam, we're gonna be wearing the star for the third jam in a row. That's right, number 100 managed to successfully call off that jam, despite not being the Ah, uh, that's what it was, the illegal procedure. We have um, some monster in the penalty box, Tomahawk jamming for the Pixies, that's number 27. Direction of play penalty coming in. Sends number 79. That is a uh, little regulator, the captain. To the penalty box. Currently, your um, lead jammer for this jam has picked up four points in their first scoring pass. And out of the penalty box, we have Monster already up towards the front of the pack. A hit to the inside knocks Tomahawk to the back. I have that as three leads in a row for the Pixies. Tomahawk really in. Yes. I think you're right. Um, they lost that lead, though, with the right, They lost the second the one, but they, but they got it. That's correct. You have to get it to lose it. So, all right, three leads in a row for the Pixies. They call off the jam there. Brings them two scoring passes. Brings them up to 31. And once again, uh, the Pixies managed to hold those anarchists to no points in that jam. They did that previously in Jam 7. So looking to capitalize on that. It was the same jammer both times. It was number 27, Tomahawk. Yeah. 
All right, number 23 on the black team. That is Trick Z. It's the first time Trick Z's been out there as the jammer in this game. They're jamming against 5150 Lucky Harms. Only the second appearance on the jammer line for Lucky Harms. Good success for Lucky Harms, though. That is lead. That's four in a row for the Pixies. Momentum is starting to shift in favor of the Pixies at this point. Initial pass has been completed by Los Anarchists. Um, Lucky Harms not willing to give up any of those points. Takes four points, calls that off, holding Los Anarchists to a zero score for two gems in a row. All right, one, two, three out on the line. Going up against 42. That's Mount Crushmore and Tap Out. Mount Crushmore has uh, not been on the jam line since Jam 6. Number 42, Mount Crushmore versus Tap Out in the pink. Mount Crushmore really jumping around a lot, very agile at the front, at the front of the pack, but all four of those Pixies blockers doing a good job of holding that back. All of that uh, agile movement has made some space. Lead goes to Mount Crushmore. First lead jam for the Anarchist since jam number six. Directional play penalty sends one Anarchist blocker to the penalty box, so a slight pack advantage to the Pixies. And that was a hit to the outside by uh, Val Hillary that takes um, tap out to the back of the pack. Sorry, that wasn't Val Hillary. That was Lil Regulator. Ah, uh, the caption. Nice hit by the pivot. Pivot on pivot hitting in turn number four. Make sure you're paying attention. Get you one of those hits that you weren't expecting. Test your mouth guard. Because it'll rattle your teeth. Tap out still looking to complete initial pass. Mount Crushmore working on their first scoring pass. I love those moves to the inside, make it so we haven't completed that scoring pass yet. We are about 30 seconds left in this Oh, jam. jammer penalty. No, just jammer drawback. Never mind. Jammer drama. <laughs> drama. Drama rama. Five, four more points on the board. Those anarchists doing a long bridge backwards. That bridge spread out. Tap out trying to take advantage of that spread to get past. Runs right into one of those blockers and that gives them the time to reform. We saw a helmet cover um, pass at the very end of that. Oh, which team? That was uh, the Pixies. Star pass to number seven, Thunderbreeze. Thank you. I always like to keep my scorecard nice and tidy. So seven more points on the board brings the Anarchists up to 58. And no points for the Pixies keeps them at 35. And hold on. Stop as you play an official timeout. And this will give us a chance to thank our officials. Did we read our officials already? We didn't. Why don't we talk about them? Our head referee is Doesn't Matter, also joined by Elkie Hollick, Ringer, Colin M. Fairley, Adam Smasher, Mass, and P.H. Demon. Our non-skating officials are Decider, William Moore, Andy Oakley, Amy Farrell Fowler, Locomotive Slash Dancer, Strong Female Character, The Spanish Inquisition, and Wizard of Laws. First stoppage of play. Here after jam number 11. Tickets for the international WFTDA playoffs and championships will go on sale June 17th, 2019. Mark your calendars now. Get tickets at WFTDA.com slash tickets. Power start for the Pixies. Number 5150 out there gonna take advantage of it. That is Lucky Harms. Crushmore starting from the penalty box. Again, I didn't see the penalty that sent Crushmore to the penalty box. I did not see it. I'm sure that's probably what the officials were Oh, actually, we have an overlay. If we get a stoppage of play, we could pop that overlay up. And some fine balance on the outside of turn one. That is lead to Lucky Harms. That is Mount Crushmore returned from the penalty box. 
along with that last blocker. We now have a full contingent of skaters on the track. Initial pass completed by Mount Christmas. Oh, oh my goodness. That was a spectacular call off. Trying to remain upright, trying to remain inbounds and collapsing like a house of cards. The star points. I gotta even give you star points for star that. Star points to Lucky Harms. Yeah. Seven points for the skater you passed and 15 star points. Unfortunately, the star points don't count to your actual score. We've got uh, jammer number four, Cherry Kiss for Los Anarchists. Two seven, Tomahawk for the Pixies. Cherry Kiss only the second appearance on the jammer line, is that right? That's right, last time we saw Cherry Kiss was back in jam number four. They were jamming against uh, Damage Patch Kiss. Two for two. Lead jam has gone to White. That hand goes in the air, you are correct. Tomahawk lead, those jammers close together. Tomahawk does not want any points to go to Los Anarchists. Calls that off with a no point jam. Our first of the game. It is. Did you know that you guys We've got a new jammer on the line in 3-0, Miss Speedy Gonzalez. And it looks like 714 Slamorella, also a new jammer on the track. Uh, so I had Slamorella in jam number three. Well done. I do too. I just right. didn't read it right. So three lead jams in a row, and seven of the last eight have gone to the Pixies. Look at this. This is a ball game. Well, it's a derby game. It's anybody's race. Nice drawback by number 362, Twiggy Marley. Ms. Oh. Gonzalez trying to protect some points with that call up. One point goes to Los Anarchists at the tail end of that jam. Yeah, so one sneaky point. Even though they got the lead, they got shut out, and the Anarchists did get one. Uh, 42 plays 59, 17 points separate these two teams. Black Jammer wears number 44. That is Mini Maniac. Mini Maniac aging out this year, going to be going to Bakersfield University. They are playing against Tomahawk. Tomahawk several times on the jam line so far. Mini Maniac, the first time out as the Jammer. Mini Maniac is lead for this jam. She's one for one. Oh, nice. That's a great little duck there around um, number three, three, Lania Klokia. That gets four points for Los Anarchists. Cover off for the Pixies. Force to the infield, drawn back. That's going to foil any star pass. Direction of play penalty picked up, so that stops the drawback. Who's that on the direction of play? Zero something. Zero five, Ginger Snapper. So we have a no pass, no penalty on that last pass. So only three points picked up by Black Jammer Mini Maniac on that last scoring pass. Star pass, new jammer for the white team is one, two, three. It's our second star pass that we've seen with the Pixies. Both times that star pass happened, the jammer's called off immediately after. So that star pass has not yet come into play as a scoring move. Three scoring passes, a four, a three, and a four for 11 points for the Anarchists. Uh, Pixies held scoreless there. We have seven minutes and 30-some seconds left to play in the half. Los Anarchists looking to give um, their regular rotation jammers a bit of a rest by putting number four, four Mini Maniac out on back-to-back -back jams. 51-50 now jamming Lucky Harms for Pixies. And it is time for Mini Maniac to go back-to-back -back with leads. Lucky Harms chasing that down, not giving any space. This is going to come down to where the um, blockers move themselves. Wow, burst of speed. I think the fastest uh, you know, rate of skating we've seen in, in this game. That's right, that. Mini Maniac saw that coming though. Also not willing to give away any points. That makes that a zero score jam for both teams. We saw that happen also in jam number 13. So these jammers are really doing a good job of watching positions. Regano, I am really enjoying working with you. You have a very smooth, fluid style. This is the first time we're working together, but uh, this, is a, this is a dream come true. You're, you're awesome. It's a treat to announce with you. Thank you for the call, Barbie.
My pleasure. Out on the jammer line, number 1024, Little Devil Rosie going up against Tomahawk. Little Devil Rosie picking up lead jammer. That's three in a row for the anarchists. Tomahawk with a jump over that inside. Initial pass completed. Eyes on oh, by the Oh, no! Mackie. Forearm called on, uh, on uh, Tomahawk. So this is going to be a power start for the anarchists. The full I don't think 30 they knew. second power start, too. Yeah, I don't think they knew. They probably would have kept skating if the, I think the call off came simultaneously with the penalty. I don't even remember who was jamming for the. Oh, no. So we had 1024. And she's going back out. And doing back to back jams. So that's the second time we've seen Los Anarchists do that. They're putting out back to back jammers when the jam has not run terribly long. And it's um, the same two jammers that we just had? It is. That is a quick lead there for Little Red Rosie, Little Devil Rosie. So four jammers have had two leads for the anarchists. Uh, no, two two jammers have had four leads for the anarchists in the last four jams. That's right. Little Devil Rosie trying to signal their team to avoid that run back, not let those um, blockers keep moving back too much. Completing that scoring pass backwards little panache there. It is four points. We have Tomahawk back on the track from the penalty box through the pack with that initial completed. They'd removed the star so they could sneak through and yes. that worked for them. Delph mode got through the pack with the star in hand. Four more points on the board. Grand total of eight for the Anarchist brings them up to 82. Uh, and for the Pixies, they are sitting on 42. They have been sitting on 42 since, jam, since the end of jam number 12. So Pixies have not put any points on the board in six jams. Number 111 that was a go-to jammer for the Pixies early on. We haven't seen her on the line since jam number eight. We're going to have a timeout by the Pixies. First team timeout. It's only the second stoppage of play we've had in the game. This game has been moving fairly quickly. We've got... Uh, little less than four and a half minutes left in this um, half. We're already at jam number 19. We've had so many wonderful stakes contact wear. Put some stakes between you and your opponent. Visit stakeswear.com. All right. That's stake, S-T-E-A-K, and wear, W-E-A-R. We'll throw an S in there at the end of stakes, and we'll have a complete name. There you go. Or it could be steak swear. That I, <laughs> that's what I read and why I spoke slowly. I had a league mate tell me that enunciation is key in these. I yes. take that guidance well. Pronunciation is accomplished with the tip of the T and the tongue. All right, one, one, one on the line against 714. I bet these two have matched up at least one point during this game. Maybe Slam not? Slamorella has not done terribly many jams. This is the third time we've seen Slamorella out for Los Anarchists. Yes, true. And only the fourth time we've seen uh, uh, Damage Patch Kid. We had an early start with Damage Patch Kid. Quick yeah, she in was the in rotation. two, four, and eight, and haven't seen her since until now. Track cut called. Who's it on? That is on Slamorella. We now have a power jam for Damage Patch Kid, who is lead at the moment. Second time Damage Patch has had lead. She's two for four. Last time she had it, she lost it on a track cut. We have one black blocker also sitting in the penalty box. That's Twiggy Marley. Here comes Idaho. Nice move. One to beat, that's the pivot at the top of the pack. T checked briefly, four to the infield. Nice work by that anarchist pivot. Damage Patch Kid holds on to that lead, is in control of this jam as Slamorella returns from the penalty box, joined by 362 blocker Twiggy Marley. Twiggy Marley quickly to the front of the pack. Last blocker to beat for Damage Patch Kid. Slamorella gets right yep. through that initial completed. Eight 
So it's eight points. Pixies, that two scoring points in that uh, last gem. That's the first time we've had multiple scoring po passes for the Pixies since gem 12. Right you are. And that represents 16% of the Pixies score. <laughs> Your mathematic skill is amazing Doubling to me. 50. <laughs> All right, go ahead, do it. Mount Crushmore for Los Anarchists. Lucky Harms, 51-50 for the Pixies. Now Crushmore makes it through the very front of the pack. That is a lead to Los Anarchists. Jammer being called back onto the track. The high block, no, high block was on the jammer. All right, high block on the jammer for the Pixies. That makes this a power gem for Los Anarchists. We are trading off power gems. And trading off leads as well. We saw that offense lining up, waiting for the signal from their jammer, and they hit that blocker line, cleared it out of the way for quick points. That's eight points, this jam for Los Anarchists. Nice check by Miss Speedy Gonzalez, but somehow the jammer was able to use that momentum, almost like a ballroom dancing move, to propel her along the backstretch out of the, out of the block. That hit to the, uh, to the outside there just managed to get Mount Crushmore barely over the line that caused a recycle to the back of his white blockers. Wow, spin move around turn number four, good for four points. These packs, these uh, teams are both moving almost as independent packs. They are maintaining right. that um, 10 foot space, but those black blockers doing a lot of spanning back, a lot of distance between themselves, whereas those white blockers are tending to work together closer at the front. The challenge of the arms gets Mount Crushmore through those white blockers for and another four points. We're at 16 points this jam for Mount Crushmore. Now the pack's finally starting to uh, congeal, get together, but nobody really playing the wrecking ball. Everybody focusing exclusively on holding back the other jammer or bridging. Nobody going up to really destroy the other wall, make a punch a hole for the jammer to get through. Mount Crushmore aware that they have control of how this jam goes. He calls that off. That's 18 points in this jam. That's the high scoring jam so far this game. That beats out the 16 points scored in the first jam. And it moves those anarchists up to an even 100 points against the Pixies 50. A true two to one margin, both scores divisible by 50. And those 18 points representing 18% of the anarchist score. 10 squared playing 7 squared plus 1. Out on the jammer line, black number 23. That is uh, Trick Z. No, not going to get off in time. It is halftime. So we are going into halftime after 20 play, 20 jams of regulation play with, as I had said just a moment ago, our score is 50 points. Pixies, 100 points. Los Anarchists, we will be back to talk to you about Derby some more in about 30 seconds. I'm Regretel, I'll have more to say. I'm Bobby Narco, we'll see you with some stats and numbers. Uh, come on back about two minutes before the game begins. We'll have some, uh, uh, some stats from the first half. We sure will, thanks. All right, we are back here uh, between the matchup of the Los Anarchists and the Pixies. Uh, this is some junior roller derby action. Uh, Los Anarchists leading 100 to 50 at halftime. 20 jams, 100 points for one team, 50 points for another. Even numbers the story of the game. It sure is. We're seeing um, a little bit of spread apart there with uh, how teams are able to capitalize on their leads. We were seeing um, multiple scoring passes for both teams. Los Anarchists has only had six multiple scoring passes, though. Doesn't sound like a lot, but they've managed to put 16 points up, 22 points up on some of those passes. Uh, the Pixies has also have had uh, four multiple scoring passes, but they've been held down to lower numbers in those. Yeah, they've uh, had a lot of scoreless passes. At least they half of their jams, they haven't put any points on the board. That's right. Uh, and very few um, jams where there was no score for either team. So um, yep, just, that's just jams 13 and 16, only two jams with no score. That's right. Los Anarchists have had to work for all of those points, despite having twice the number of points that Pixies have had. They've had to do a lot of um, watching and managing where the other jammer happens to be and using really strategic call-offs. We see a lot of good um, eye 
eye communication with their benches, looking for those um, opportunities to call from their Every jam has had a lead. Uh, anarchists have had lead 12 times. The Pixies have had lead eight times. Anarchists have not passed the star. Uh, Pixies have passed the star twice, once to number seven and once to number one, two, three. In terms of jammer penalties, the uh, anarchists have had the jammer in the penalty box three times. The Pixies have had their jammer in the penalty box five times. Uh, and uh, I have some jammer percentages uh, for you. Uh, if time permits, we'll get to those later. Um, but a uh, lot of different jammers for both teams. Uh, Mount Crushmore probably uh, and Little Devil Rosie, the highlights for the anarchists. Crushmore is three for four, Little Devil Rosie's three for three. Tomahawk doing the lion's share of the jamming for um, the Pixies. She's three for eight from the jammer line. Also Lucky Harms, two for five from the jammer line. Damage Patch Kid, two for four from the jammer line. That's right. We've got Mini Maniac on the jamming for Los Anarchists and Lucky Harms jamming for the Pixies. We have lost uh, both Pivot and Jammer to penalties but at uh, turn one there. Did you see the call on Harms? I have not seen what the call was. But there. she's there in, in the, the box, box nonetheless. Regardless, that's right. Lead has gone to Mini Maniac. Mini Maniac with um, one blocker to beat at the front there. That blocker gets some support from number 50. That is four points, Los Anarchists. With that, we have points on the board for this second half. Fifty-one fifty out of the penalty box turns that apex, gets a hit to the inside, recycled to the back, then hit to the outside. There's a lot of speeding around to the back for 5150 so far. That tripod at the front of white blockers is just almost stopping Mini Mania dead in their tracks. That's the opportunity needed by Lucky Harms jump along the almost straightaway section there. That's two points picked up by the most anarchists. No points picked up for the Pixies. 106 to 50, heading into jam number two of the second period. So I don't know if we were messing around with the uh, attachments, but uh, if you're watching at home and you don't have the scoreboard on the back of your, on the bottom of your screen, Maybe one of the people in our tech crew could fix that, put that score back on the bottom of the screen. There it is. Up at the top of the screen. Thank we you. We have Lil Devil Rosie in black for Los Anarchists. Damage Patch Kid in white for the Pixies. Lil Devil Rosie was perfect, three for three in the first half. Trying to keep that up is lead for this gem as well. We have had a star pass from uh, on white. From Just looking to see the back end of that skater. That is tap out one, two, three. Who started? I thought that tap was out. Damage Patch Kid. Ah, uh, okay. Pack is spreading out. Whenever you get those blockers moved apart from each other, advantage goes to the jammer in maneuverability. Four points put in the air for the anarchists. Illegal position sends Monster to the penalty box. Initial pass completed by the Pixies. One more scoring pass for the anarchists, and the action comes to a halt. Wow, 16 points on the board. 16 points to uh, number 1024, Lil Devil Rosie. Los Anarchists putting up some pretty high scoring jams. We saw early in the game, uh, number 42 put up 22 points in that first half and jammed 20. So number 27 on the line for the Pixies, that is Tomahawk. And number 23 on the line for the Anarchists, that is Trick Z. We have uh, 11 squared plus one playing seven squared plus one. So Trick Z jammed in one jam in the first half. Yes, 0 for one, but now getting lead, one for two. Pivot for the Pixies headed to the penalty box. 
Pixies Jammer hit to the outside by Lil Regulate Her, the captain for the Los Anarchists. Four points go to Trick Z. And back block. Initial Sending pass. It. Sending one of the Pixies to the penalty box. Trixie paying attention to that bench, calls that jam off before Trixie can get back to the pack and score any points. So far, Pixies are scoreless in this second half. Yeah, getting outscored 30 nil so far this period. Lamorella, 7-1-4, returning to the jam line for Los Anarchists. 1-1-1 one, one, one damage patch kit in white for the Pixies. That is a hard hit to the outside. Knocks 7-1-4 Slamorella to the ground. Back into the pack, they're able to clear on the outside of that far apex. That is lead to Los Anarchists. Track cut sending a Pixie to the penalty box. That is 51-50 uh, Lucky Harms. Lucky Harms playing a lot of positions this game. We've seen them block, we've seen them jam, we've seen them pivot. Yeah, she was the one who impressed me from jam number one in the pivot line. That's right. In the pivot stripe. So four points on the board for the Anarchist brings them up to 134. Uh, Pixies again scoreless, sitting on 50. Number 30, Ms. Speedy Gonzalez, looking to make some change to that statistic. We've got two, three in black. That is Trick Z. Speedy Gonzalez was one for one in the first half of the Pixies, but not so, not so much luck this half. Trick Z out for their second time this second half. The first half we only saw Trick Z out once. This is the second time in this half and lead both times this half. Lucky Harms returns from the penalty box. That is a cleared penalty box for us. Two, three, Trick Z pulled to the back. Then Speedy Gonzalez pulled to the back. Both of these packs, both of these uh, groups of blockers doing a great job covering those lines, forcing those hits to the outside, doing a lot of recycling. Jammers are having to go to the back of the pack, fight their way all the way back forward. Now Pixie's losing another blocker to the penalty box on a low block. That's number five zero, Strawberry Shortskate. Low block again being called. Who's now on this next low block? It's the pivot, the Pixies pivot. That was four points to Los Anarchists at the end of that jam. The uh, anarchists wanted to give me uh, wanted me to give some shout outs. We wish uh, a happy prom to Thrasher. Thrasher could not make the trip because she's at prom. Uh, also, we, uh, anarchists are missing Maddie Mayhem, who is back in California uh, uh, taking the SAT this weekend. We have a new jammer out for the Pixies. This is 3-3 three, three, Lenya Klokya. Jamming for Los Anarchists is Monster. It's been a little while since we've seen Monster out there on the jam line as well. Yep. Monster was one for four in the first half. Lenya Klokya aging out. She's going to be going to Central Washington University. Good to see Lenya Klokya out there in her last year of skating as a junior. We have uh, one scoring pass completed by Monster. Four points to Los Anarchists so far, looking at a second scoring point. Then you clock, yeah. Hoping to earn an initial pass with this push. This is definitely a game of strength at this point. All of these walls having to move quickly, but their best move so far has been when they all stay together and they manage to just stop that momentum. It's uh, moving around 
getting that momentum going. That's what's giving the opportunities to these um, small agile blockers like Monster. We're seeing Monster with 12 points so far in this gem. What we see right now is such a solid wall. When this wall stays solid of white players at the front, it's difficult for Monster to get past. We see that pivot filling in the space behind. That tripod at the front is able to stay solid with that. That's about the only thing that we could slow Monster down right now. As soon as the momentum starts moving, like we see right there, that's the opportunity. Star pass being indicated. It did go into the pivot, but it never got on. And I can't see the uniform number of that pivot. Spin around for me. One, two, three. So uh, 15 points representing 10% of the Anarchist score. They're up at 153. No points on the board for uh, Pixies. 103 point lead now. Uh, a 53 nil run for the Anarchists here in the second period. And the Pixies are going to take a timeout to talk it over. That is their uh, second team timeout. Hit This Derby gear has everything you need to get rolling. From skates to protective gear and unmatched service for all your derby needs. Before you hit the track, hit this. Yeah. Talked about some of the skaters that were aging out, also aging out on the Pixies boss, the captain, going to North Idaho College, and then over on the anarchist side, Brazilian Smack's going to be going to San Francisco University, Squash Bob Skate Pants going to be UC, going to be going to UC Berkeley, and Mini Maniac uh, going to be going to Bakersfield University in the fall. Best of luck to our graduating juniors. I know that there's still derby ahead in your lives. We have had six jams of play so far in this second half. The Pixies have been held scoreless in all six of those jams. They've had to use a star pass twice just in an effort to try to get that helmet cover through the pack and into scoring position. It's been denied each time by Los Anarchists. The jam has been called off right when that star pass happens. So with this time out, they're probably looking to regroup and get some momentum back into scoring. They've sent out number 2-7, Tomahawk to jam for them. Yeah, Tomahawk was their go-to eight jams uh, more than any other Pixie skater in the first half. Tomahawk was three out of eight. Uh, only the second appearance on the jammer lane this half, so she's three out of nine, the heading into against, her tenth jam. The jamming against uh, number four, Cherry Kiss from Los Anarchists. Cherry Kiss, probably a fairly fresh jammer, not having jammed a lot. Yeah, twice, one for two in the first half, and the first this is her first appearance in the jammer line. Second half, now she's two out of three as jammer. So lead uh, eight times in a row, and 12 of the last 13 going back to the last half, seven times in a row here in jam number seven this period. That is four points to Los Anarchists. Tomahawk pulled to the back of the pack. A nice wide stance from number one, two, three, zero. Semi slam. <laughs> Penalty called. Pixie's losing a blocker. And now a low block called on the anarchist pivot. So each team down one, eight, uh, four on four. Tomahawk now in stealth mode. We're seeing some high-level blocking work from these black blockers. Blocking with the head is the call. Blocking with the head on the jammer, so lead has lost our first two-minute jam of the second half. I can see how that can happen. You get tired, you just put your head down and you skate into somebody, you get a blocker with the head call. Another uh, skater to the penalty box for the anarchists, so opportunity now for the first points of the half for the Pixies. Initial pass completed in stealth mode and heading around to score. Going to hit that pack in turn number two. We have about 10 seconds of this jam left with power jam. Nice blocking there by 5150. Lucky Harms opening up that line, getting our jammer through untouched. Everybody moved wide apart on that white team, just left that opportunity open. Black Jammer returns from the penalty box, hop over the apex, and takes those points. We ended up with 12 points was Anarchist, 4 points Pixies in that 7th um, jam. 
We were, I was uh, thinking about that blocking with the head penalty that uh, went to the jammer, and that there's a lot to be said about uh, your stance in roller derby. You know, we work so hard to get low, but that moment of exhaustion, like you were saying, when you drop your head, your eyes go down and your head is forward. That's when you're going to get that blocking with the head penalty, even though you may just be in your low stance. If it's clear that your head is down and rather than up, blocking with the head is to blame. We have a break in that streak of leads. Number three, three, Lenya Klokia out there as the lead for the Pixies. Going up against Trick Z was the other jammer, number 23. Uh, and uh, nothing, nothing, our first scoreless of the half, our third scoreless of the game. That's right. Trick Z was out there so fast, challenged that right away. Trick Z doesn't want to give up their opportunity to score points, though, stays there at the jammer line. And stoppage of play, uh, official timeout. Experience world-class edging with the Radar Halo. Available in a full range of hardnesses from 84A all the way up to 103A. There's a halo for everyone. Skaters getting back out onto the track. They thought it was a team timeout, secondly. Uh, so they uh, started to skate over to the pack. Also want to give out a shout out, to Anarchist asked me to shout out to Rose Dredd, a retired skater. Uh, Rose, uh, the, your teammates, or your former teammates miss you, know you're watching on the stream back home. Thanks to everybody who is tuning in to watch the Big O 2018, and thanks to our Ace production crew, they've been helping us out in spite of my um, technical difficulties. So during that um, bit of review time, there was a penalty assessed to number 3-3 three, three as the jammer from the Pixies. That forces a power start for number 2-3, Trick Z of Los Anarchists. So we have back-to-back -back jams with the exact same two jammers will be out on the track. A quick four points picked up by Trick Z for Los Anarchists. Did you catch what the call was? I did not see it. Nor did I. Then you clock you hit with a block early on as they come out from the penalty box. Multiplayer block sending the Pixies pivot to the penalty box. That's a passel of peas. Plenty of peas. We've got eight points so far to those anarchists in that um, in this jam. We are nine jams in. Linia Klokia returning that helmet cover to their head. Initials pass still being worked on. Pivot is in the box, and Linia Klokia is on their own. One of the highest scoring points we've seen in the second period, Rich. That was some close eyes um, on the action there by that outside pack ref, Linia Klokia, almost getting a cut track penalty. Moves forward, does get another penalty. That makes this a power jam in favor of Los Anarchists. 12 points so far on the board for Los Anarchists, this jam. This is 16 points the high mark this half, 18 points the high mark in the game. Four more points size the high mark this half and increases the score by one ninth. 165 going up to 181. And Lina Clock, you're going to be jamming three jams in a row. Timeout, official review. Pixies, them wouldn't be at all surprised if they are trying to spring uh, their jammer from the Huskow, trying to get that track cut overturned. Of course, that speculation of, and doesn't matter, our head referee will tell us the gist of the call and will tell us the results of the call. Our social media team is working all weekend to bring you live tweets and Facebook coverage throughout this event to supplement this live stream that is so awesome for your enjoyment. Have you been to Big O before? This is my second. This is my first, but I'm having a blast and it's definitely not going to be my last. I find it a wonderful resource as an announcer and a player and somebody that uh, organizes games at my home league that this is a great opportunity for me to meet all these other announcers and all these other teams and I can scout out other teams um, to propose for ours to play. There you go. 
Uh, big you tournament going on this weekend in Canada, isn't there? Is it put up your tukes this weekend? I believe it is, yes. Well, there you go. Shout out to all the people who are uh, up there in Canada to put out your tukes. Now we have Doesn't Matter. Interesting, they're asking for a uh, penalty on a blocker. Not often that an official review is used for that. Um, they, they might use it if it's uh, something that they think was very obvious and should be in view of the officials. Or maybe that blocker's sitting on six and they want to get him out of the game. They want to get that seventh. Yeah, there are, there are strategic reasons to use um, a review on a blocker. Just not common, not commonly done. The, the penalty, the official reviews almost always have something to do with the jammer. You want your jammer penalty rescinded. You want the other jammer penalty assessed. You're challenging the points. Also, that blocker may be somebody that is high in their jammer rotation, and the coaching crew is mindful of the opportunities for that um, player that plays multiple positions. So many possibilities, but uh, good, uh, unusual review. Posted we, by... Uh, we get to speculate wildly. Right, because we're on the broadcast. Post Falls, Idaho. Posting the review. Reminder about safety. Um, you have to have all your protective gear on if you are on skates. There is no skates. Have we paid all the bills? Have we, uh, have we, have we got all our sponsors checked off? Now would be a prime time. Our last sponsor read for this second half goes to check out KLCC. 89.7 NPR for Oregonians. Oh, some national public radio. That's my first time saying the word Oregonians, and I apologize if I've done that all wrong. Okay, here's Doesn't Matter. You were great. Thank you. All right, so they win that official review. Pivot's going to be reporting to the penalty box for the anarchists on a destruction. Still going to be a power start. 10-24 on the line for the Anarchists. That is Little Devil Rosie. That pivot that receives that uh, penalty is 7-1-0 Brazilian smack. Not someone that we often see in the jammer rotation. So obviously the white team had strong confidence in what that call should be. The jam picked up by Little Devil Rosie. She was uh, three for three in the first half. Now she's two for two in the second half. So perfect five for five is Little Devil Rosie. In your clock, you're now leaving the penalty box. Only one skater left. That is the pivot who is standing. That is Linia Klokia's third time out on the track in a row. Those penalties and then, have put her in the box each time. And then the jam before that also. So three in a row and then one off and then another. Four of the last five jams have been done by uh, Linia Klokia. That's a lot of endurance work there. Yep. We're all about that. For eight points in for Los Anarchists in this jam. Wow, smoothly around the outside. We do have a completed helmet cover pass to White Pivot. White Pivot, this jam looks to be one, two, three. There we go. Three t third time the star has been passed to number one, two, three this period. And uh, fourth time in the game, also passed in the 15th jam of the first period. I was wrong about who received that star pass, though. This is actually number seven. This is Thunder Breeze. Seven got the other star pass, so second star pass uh, first of this half, but uh, jam number 11, the star was also passed to number seven. Thunder Breeze, a favored recipient of the spangled helmet cover. Black Jammer has number four. That will make her cherry kiss. Don't forget fans. We've got 3-0 out there for MVP White, Miss Speedy Gonzalez. At the end of this weekend, we've been having all the teams We're a little bit less than 13 minutes of derby left as we enter Jam 11. Every game, that team is going to join against Team Canada on Jack Long Sunday at 8.40. That is the Team Canada. Those black blockers moving wide. A push to the outside. Hey, look at that. Pixies have lead for only the second time this period. Did Anarchist get 17 points in the last jam? 
I don't have 17 in my tally. I have 8 in my tally. I must have done something wrong. Our stats are unofficial. <laughs> we are willing to be wrong at any moment. Illegal contact coming in at the very end. That's on number 100 on the illegal contact. That official is, timeout. And that is four points assessed to the Pixies at the oh, end of a, that jam. We got a down skater. Medical team coming out. We've seen great work from our medical teams this weekend so far, doing a good work of clearing the track quickly and efficiently. Our in-house microphones and all go quiet while this happens. You and I have an opportunity to uh, entertain our guests at home with what we've seen so far on the track. I was just thinking about those uh, star passes we saw in our previous gem. That star pass went to number seven. You said that uh, number seven has re received uh, previous star passes. Yeah, gem number 11 of the first period. That's right. Um, are you the usual favorite for the Pixies for that star pass is uh, number one, two, three, who I had mistakenly thought that it had been. A oh, natural out. mistake to make. Yeah, one, two, three, tap out. We're seeing um, one, two, three, tap out um, is also in their regular jammer rotation, too. So we might be seeing some pairings there where they're familiarly putting jammers and pivots together on the same line. Especially when, when, when you had Lina out there who normally wasn't jamming, who had right. only started jamming this period and all of a sudden was jamming four out of five jams. Right. And with, uh, with those penalties, that put Linia out there on three back-to-back -back jams, yep. which even with those 30 seconds sits in the penalty box, it's exhausting both physically and mentally to have to continue doing the same thing that you're not succeeding at. Although, number seven, I don't have any starts on the jammer line for number seven. Two star passes, but no starts on the line for Thunder Breeze. Often somebody will be a go-to pivot where they have the skills to be the jammer, but they also have the knowledge on the track to be very vocal for their teammates. Um, it's a strategic use to use somebody solely as a pivot. We saw, um, you could, might have heard some background clapping there, that uh, skater that had been taking some time to uh, gain their composure on the track was able to stand up and skate off the side. Um, our WFTDA rules say that if a jam is called off with somebody injured, that they will sit the next three jams. So we won't see them again for a little while. But yeah, that's, that was Rainbow Smash, number 117. Going to be uh, sitting for three jams. But glad to see that they are up and around on their own power. If you are Rainbow Smash's parents, don't worry. Nobody gets paid to play derby. That's what makes it fantastic. We still see the official at the pivot line there, signaling that we are having some official time out. Yeah, you have to have the medics on the track, so the medics might be escorting the skater somewhere safe, and so we can't really get started until they get back. That's right. Safety first in roller derby. Shout out to the Junior Roller Derby Association. What a fantastic um, way to get your child involved with sports or, or to get involved with sports. Tell your parents you want to play some junior derby. If you're watching your friends out here skating and you want to get involved, you don't have to be a skater. There can be junior officials. There can be junior coaches. Uh, juniors can part. I've worked with junior announcers. So uh, juniors uh, get involved in any level, in any capacity in the sport. If you're a junior or if you have a parent and you're looking for an activity for your kids that is wholesome and team building, and so junior roller derby is the way to go. I couldn't have said that better myself as a junior coach. That w it warms my heart to uh, hear the reminders there that there are opportunities to facilitate um, learning for a variety of um, youth in, in uh, roller derby. I find as a coach that roller derby tends to attract youth that uh, may not be involved in other sports and provides that athletic opportunity and keeping kids active and healthy in a supportive community. So this has morphed into an official review um, the, uh, the anarchists are going to uh, use their uh, retained official review. They're going to try and go for the uh, full muffin. Well, I, well, they won't get the full muffin because they didn't get the first half. But, you know, two out of two ain't bad. 
they come in, they kick so the with the official reviews, <laughs> each team gets uh, one official <laughs> review per half. College, if you um, call for an official review years. and your official review is <laughs> successful, you can maintain oh, that smart. and know, call for another sure. official yeah. review later in that half. Like However, if you are successful with their second official review, you don't get to retain it. You lose it regardless. But if you if you win the first and then win the second in the first period, and then you win the first and win the second in the second period. That is called the full muffin, named for Coach Muffin, who is legendarily the first person to achieve the feat of winning all four official reviews. I'm glad you were able to explain that to me. A little term of art, the full muffin. All educational here with the WFTDA. The sure, the more you know. Kind of picture your own rainbow and star going across the screen. <laughs> if you're going to be in the New York City area next Friday, I will be performing at St. Bartholomew's Cathedral. I'm going to be doing Rachmaninoff's Vespers. So if you're in New York City and want to come hear me sing, I'd love to hear you. Introduce yourself afterwards. I'll be the guy in the tuxedo. That's really exciting. There you go. Sorry, trying to fill time. We're taking a look here at what we're doing for score so far in this second half. We're sitting at 58 points, Pixies, 198 Los Anarchists. That is a really big spread that we've seen happen so far in these uh, 11 jams of play we've had so far. We started this half with the Pixies at 50 and Los Anarchists at uh, 100. So at that point, we were seeing two points Los Anarchists to every one point Pixies. That has just marched away, 98 points to eight points um, in favor of Los Anarchists. Yeah, nearly four to one. Not quite four to one, but more than three to one. Our jams, though, are staying about the same length. In the first half, we saw 20 jams in 30 minutes of play, averaging out about a minute. And my artist, Walker100, has been ex uh, expelled for the game for a Regis high block. Uh, Len uh, has officially reviewed that particular call, and the call will stand. Last time the has lost their official review for the half. Okay. So, Anarchist Blocker was expelled for egregious conduct. That's number 100. Uh, and the official review was to try and get that penalty rescinded. But on further review, no such luck. Number 100 escorted off the track. Did they see what kind of egregious block? We are on the side of caution. I don't have that in my head right now because I was busy looking ahead at uh, the positions that number 100 has played. So they have lost one of the rotational jammers with that expulsion. And starting from the penalty box number four, I didn't see what the call was that sent the uh, center there. And Tomahawk, number 27, picks up lead. That's two leads in a row. For the Pixies, first time this half, the Pixies have strung consecutive leads together, and the first time since Jim's number 13 and 14 of the first period. That jam gets called off. No points picked up by either team. Our second scoreless of the period and our fourth scoreless of the game. Really, from this angle, I cannot tell. We're going to We've got one, two, three, tap out in white. Looks like two, three, trick Z in black. Trick Z was 0 for 1 in the first half, but is 2 for 2 in this half. And uh, tap out was 0 for 2 in the first half. And this is the first appearance on the jammer line this half. Those white blockers being moved apart a lot, but they were able to individually make a lot of hits that sent that black jammer to the outside. That was the opportunity needed for a tap out. Lead goes to the Pixies. Yeah, that's three in a row. Return from the penalty box, number four. Four holds the space at the back of the trap, hoping to confuse number one, two, three into coming in behind them. That worked. That made all those blockers for them to come back through. One, two, three with one blocker to beat at the front. Success, four points, Pixies. Penalty coming in. It's a multiplayer, is that what it was? The so forearm four penalty goes to 2-3. That is the sitting as the jammer for Los Anarchists. That makes this a power jam for the Pixies. 
First time in this period that uh, Pixies have scored more than once in a jam, uh, more than one scoring pass in a jam. That's right, and we are nearing three. I like the symmetry of the number two, three, one, two, three, the jammers. Now, it's been a while since we've seen three scoring passes from the Pixies. Last time they had three scoring passes was back in jam five in the first half, but that was also the same jammer, one, two, three, tap out. Direction of play sends Brazilian smacks to the penalty box. Two, three, Trick Z has returned from the penalty box, takes multiple hits to the inside, manages to be recycled to the back as one, two, three, tap out is coming in for their fourth scoring pass. So the 12 points on the board already for tap out ties the high mark for the Pixies and two more sets the high mark. 14 points, the highest jam of the game for the Pipsy, Pixies and uh, represents a significant portion of the score of the team. And uh, all of those high scoring jams for the Pixies have gone to number one, two, three, tap out. So roughly 20%, roughly one fifth of the score uh, right there on that set of whistles. 27 on the line for the Pixies, that's Tomahawk. Number four, Cherry Kiss for Los Anarchists with a farther back start with a very low stance. Yeah, she did that a surprise. lot yesterday. That was successful, that is lead to Los Anarchists. Hey, yeah, if it works, go with it. Penalty call, I didn't see the call, but uh, Anarchists losing a block. Anarchists currently with two blockers in the penalty box. And now a high block called on a uh, Pixies blocker. That is Boss. So as many referees as skaters on the track right now, briefly. Seven of each. That is a completed scoring pass there for Cherry Kiss. Eight points this jam for those anarchists. Yeah, they're up over the two century mark. Right now we've got one to beat at the top of the turn. Still plenty of time left in the game, seven minutes and change. That hit at the end did not knock Cherry Kiss out of bounds, so they're able to get back up and keep skating. Illegal contact picked up for it too far out in front when the hit was delivered, so an illegal contact penalty going to be assessed on uh, Val Kilry, number 73 of the Pixies. Dozen points on the board brings the Anarchist to 210. 72 for the Pixies. We see 1024 out there at the jam line. That is. Uh, Little Devil Rosie for Los Anarchists. Looks, looks like about the third time they've been out jamming this uh, second half. The other jammer they'll be facing when this jam gets underway is number seven in white. That is Thunder Breeze. This will be the first time we've seen Thunder Breeze start as a jammer this entire game. They have taken the star pass several times. They just haven't started as the initial jammer at the beginning. Jam. So head referee doesn't matter talking things over with Quadfather during this official timeout. There may be a foul out or there may be another uh, ejection. Or they might just be, uh, you know, candlesticks are nice. Discussing what to get the uh, in-laws for their birthdays. What to bring home from their field trip to Eugene. That rolling whistle ends that official timeout. Nobody has been added to the penalty box, and we have not been advised of any foul outs. So on the line, 10, 24, and 7 as before. Little Devil, Rosie, and Thunder Breeze. Thunder Breeze first appearance on the Jammer line. We talked about it before. Yeah, She's right. inherited the star a couple times. It's her first time wearing it from the get. And picking up lead. She's perfect. One for one. No, 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 that's, no. That's Little Red Rosie. Yeah, Double never mind. Rosie, that is the lead for Los Anarchists. Withdrawn. Little Devil Rosie perfect this half. She's three for three. And she was three for three in the first half. She's six for six. 
a drawback coming from 1-2-3 tap out. That would be the trade-off that we've seen in this gem with 1-2-3 as the pivot and 7 as the gem are often we've seen the reverse order for yep. gem or pivot pairings. There you go, through a looking glass. Ooh, big hit at the back of the pack. Somebody's got a call on a penalty. It's a high block and it's on the pivot. Got eight points total on the board for those anarchists in that jam. Pixies, no points. We have almost a three to one margin. Uh, three times 72 would be 216, so it's 218 to 72. This jam will start with five minutes of regulation gameplay left. 27, that is Tomahawk. Third time on the line and five jams for Tomahawk. That's right, and against they're jamming against Trixie. We've seen a lot of action from Trixie as well. Yes, yeah, second in time second in four half. jams. Multiplayer block coming in. Pixie's losing a blocker on the multiplayer. That is lead to Trixie. There was some hits um, at the far apex from us. Um, Trixie managed to keep in bounds, that one hand on the ground in play. We have a penalty going to the jammer. This is a, now a power jam for Trixie. Yeah, that's a track cut being called on Tomahawk there. Battles through that two wall, just squeezes through like the last piece of toothpaste and gets out for four points. Last dollop of toothpaste, I should say. Four more points. Untouched that time through. Trixie calling that jam off just as Tomahawk is stepping away from the penalty box released. So not iced in the penalty box. We'll start with full lines from both teams. 13 points on the board makes the score uh, 231 to 72. 51 50 on the line for the Pixies. That is Lucky Harms. 714 Slamarella. Here we go. Jam number 17. This is the first time we're seeing Lucky Harm start as a jammer in this second half. We haven't seen that since jam one. Yeah, Lucky Harm's getting called off on a track cut. Lead still open. And there it goes. Lead now closed. Lead picked up by the anarchists. Four in a row for them. That's two power jams in a row for yep. the anarchists as well. Both on track cuts. Braced two wall at the top of the pack. One dropping back, now one on one defense. We've got some tight work there with all four of those black blockers holding back um, white blocker number seven, trying to maintain the pack at the back. There's a hit to the outside. White is weakened by one blocker. Yeah, illegal contact called on three, two, one, or one, two, three, rather. Slamorella back on a scoring pass. Four points so far for those anarchists. Lucky Harms released from the penalty box comes in. Trying to get a apex jump. Gets hit to the inside and that recycling just continues. Yeah, taking all the way back to turn number four. We're at eight points so far this jam for Slamorella of those anarchists. Way out in front, have to let her go or risk that illegal contact penalty. Four more points on the board. That's a dozen for the anarchists and counting. Still 30 seconds left in the jam. Forearm penalty. Who's it on? It's on the jammer. Uh, Lucky Harms to the penalty box for the second time this jam. That's actually on the black pivot, that forearms penalty. Oh. Well, well the white jammer's in the penalty box on something. Oh, no, she's not. I'm sorry. That is another scoring pass completed. We're at uh, 20 points this jam for those anarchists. So 20 points on the board. Is that the highest of the game? It is. We got 22 points went to oh. um, in that last jam, jam 20, to uh, number 42 in the first half. 
Okay. We are uh, starting at this point in this game. We've got about a minute left. We have an official timeout right now. There's a minute of gameplay left. We're starting to see the effects of fatigue on both teams as these penalties rack up further and further. For both teams, this is their second game of the weekend. The official timeout has ended. The anarchists are calling a team timeout. Yeah, turning it into the team timeout. They're uh, only their second, oh, their first team timeout. I think they just wanted to see that nice round number in the period clock. Our current score with one minute of gameplay left to go, 72 points Pixies, 251 points Los Anarchists. A reminder of how these two teams were ranked coming into this. Los Anarchists, number three in the JRDA rankings. The Pixies, number 11. So that eight point spread in rankings right. amongst junior teams where there's not so many to start with. Sure. We're seeing the result of that difference. There is um, statistically the opportunity to advance as a losing team when sure. you're playing a higher ranked team. So um, the Pixie's probably looking to protect that point spread as much as they, or, or advance that point spread, sorry, as much sure. as they can. Whereas the Los Anarchists would be looking to capitalize on any opportunities they have to keep that spread wide and keep themselves ahead in the rankings. Now I know the different uh, different leagues use different calculators. The MRDA ranks their teams a different way. The WFTDA has a very complicated rankings calculator. I am not familiar, and perhaps as a junior coach, you could uh, uh, let me know how the JRDA uses their uh, rankings. Well, as someone that is uh, math phobic, I rely on my statistician within my lead to give me that info. Right now, we're looking at squash bob skate pants jamming for Los Anarchists as the first time first out jamming jam. this entire game. Yep. Damage Patch Kid jamming for the Pixies. Damage Patch Kid is your lead this jam. First time since jam number 13 that the Pixies have had lead. Second time this period, that, uh, third time this period, the Damage Patch Kid is jammed. That hit to the inside is pulling number five to all the way to the back. Damage Patch Kid looking to manage that clock probably. We have about 15 seconds left of regulation play. And with that, that is an initial pass completed for number 5-2. We've got 59 seconds to go, and our kiss We have no time left in regulation play Ooh, anymore. This jam hit. clock ready to run oh, out. Oh, we need an EMT. That's a shame. Our way of the, of, of, not, a, not a very great way to the, for the game to end. We have no time left on the clock. Barring any reviews, this will be the score that we're looking at before yeah. the end of this game. The jam did end in an unnatural way, so it's within the ref's discretion to order another jam, but I can't imagine why they would, the score standing what it is. That's right, we'll wait it out and see what happens. Our current score is 72 points Pixies, 251 points Los Anarchists. I don't know if there's points on yet, um, that have not been added to those tallies? When um, we're finished with the official work that is being done, as, as you said, with this uh, unnatural end to gameplay, then we will, um, once we, until we hear that rolling whistle, the, the points are not all officially tallied, so we'll there see we go. Black some hand has signals zero. coming up. So Black's gonna stay at 251, and White had three. That's gonna bring them up to 75. So both of these scores are divisible by uh, 25, a 10 to 3 ratio, your final uh, math. We want to thank the hard work of our officials during this um, JRDA regulated yeah. game. There's a lot of work to be done when um, by the officials when they are um, watching a JRDA game with the um, oftentimes smaller skaters, we see a lot more agile work. So those 
um, officials you'll see skating around the outside have to do a lot more of that ducking low, getting low. There's the physical work of, of the gameplay that's quite different with JRD. This might cut short a sort of victory lap. Oh, it's good to see her up. That was the jammer, number 52. You can probably hear the uh, ambient sound of the clapping in the arena. Number five, Gina, has been able to stand up on her own strength and skate away. Yeah, rolling over to that EMT station in turn number one. Let's listen for that long, swooping whistle. And that will be an official final, 251 to 75. Not sure whether or not we'll have a victory lap next game on this track. It's supposed to start in 20 minutes, so we might forego the, uh, the victory lap here. That is an official final score. Um, whether or not we do a victory lap, I think uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and break from the action. It has been my absolute pleasure calling this game with you, Regretto. I have enjoyed working with you too, Bobby Narco. Uh, and uh, so do you know what's coming up next on this track? Do we know? I sure do. Right now we are on track two. It track is two. Saturday. Next we'll have Sacramento oh. versus Evil. Evil. Yes, Edmonton versus Sacramento. Uh, international battle. Canada against the United States. Uh, until then, come on back about 20 minutes. I'm Bobby Narco. This is Regretal, and we wish you peace, love, and roller derby. <laughs>